Hello everybody. So today I want to make a little different video and this would be my versus video of my 2006 Lincoln Town Car Signature Limited versus a 2016 Subaru Forester 2.5 premium trim level. And this is actually our second car. This is my wife's car. And I wanted to make this video because a lot of the time I talk about how I'm not a crossover slash SUV person. But yet, I think it's fair to mention that our second car is a crossover. A very, very boring crossover, but a crossover nonetheless. And for us to get this car, I traded in a 2010 Buick LaCrosse CXS which was basically a fully loaded vehicle at the time. I bought it new in 2010, and this Forester we bought in 2016, also brand new, because at the time we were extremely pregnant and we wanted to do the right thing for our kid, which is to have a new car because in 2016, the Buick LaCrosse had well over 100,000 miles. We drove it all over the country. And I don't want to say that I, I put up a big fight to trade that Buick LaCrosse in. I mean, I had some reservations. I, I was really sad uh, to see it go. Maybe even a little too sad and a bit too emotional. But I, I did. I think I did the right thing by trading in a six-year-old car with a, you know, quite a bit of miles uh, for something that a responsible parent would get, which is a new crossover for my wife, for our kid, have more room, you know, reliable, Japanese, all-wheel drive, blah, blah, blah. And, and we did settle on this Subaru Forester, and it's been in our family ever since. Uh, my wife loves it. I get to drive it every once in a while. It's a really good car in the snow, I'm not going to lie, but it's no town car. So I wanted to focus on the Forester, obviously, because it's kind of a pseudo review video. But at the same time, I do want to draw some comparisons. And I'm filming this by our house. So that's why, you know, we live in a condo. So the parking lot is obviously shared by many other vehicles. But these two just so happen to be parked side by side. And yeah, here we go. I also want to uh, do a quick shout out to all the subscribers and all the commenters and all the, the great things that are kind of starting to happen because I started shooting these videos. Uh, you know, thank you everybody for uh, subscribing. Thank you for all the comments. I, I do read them. I do reply to every single one of you. Uh, and yeah, this has been a fun experience and I enjoy shooting these videos and who knew that there would be so many other people who are interested in this. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And please continue on the same pace and I will try to keep you entertained as much as possible. So going back to the Forester. So this is a 2016. I do have the window sticker and all the manuals that are inside right now. And we're going to take a look at those. But what can I tell you about it? So this is the second from the base trim level. So it has a couple extra goodies that the very base level wouldn't have. But this is a pretty base vehicle versus my town car, which is almost fully loaded for the 06 model year. It's missing the nav. But other than that, uh, and it's got standard rims where, um, you know, there were some optional rims on that, which mine does not have. This is not that. This is a um, pretty basic run-of-the-mill vehicle that looks, I mean, you know, when I think about it overall, I mean, it looks pretty bland, to be honest with you. It doesn't really have any any special character line or any kind of special look. When I think about this car, honestly, I think of this car as a very basic less capable jeep wrangler that's you know japanese version of a of a base jeep wrangler that's just not as capable as you know as the jeep wrangler that's kind of what i look at um this car does have the license plate from my very very beloved buick lacrosse and it's interesting because the you know so k19 so you know i was born in belarus you can say ussr and there's a very famous uh, K-19, a submarine, which actually uh, had some sort of a nuclear 
accident. And there's even a Harrison Ford movie about K-19, The Widowmaker. So when I got this license plate for that Buick Lacrosse, I was like, oh, crap. You know, I had so many people tell me, don't buy Buicks. Oh, my God. Buy a Lexus. Buy a BMW. Buy this. Buy that. Don't buy. And then when I got the license plate that said K-19 on that Buick Lacrosse, I was like, oh, boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hear about it. Um, and thankfully, I, I guess not a lot of people know military history, so not a lot of people knew about the K-19, the famous Soviet submarine that had like a nuclear disaster happen on board where some sailors died. And anyway, I'm digressing. Anyway, so the, the styling of this thing is pretty basic, honestly. I mean, it's gray in color. Uh, it's got the roof rails. It has a couple extra features, which I'll show you. But overall nothing nothing to write home about versus the town car i mean look at that thing look, look how look how much longer the town car is than this car i mean it's it really sticks out like like there there you go it's like an extra couple feet of a car so quality wise i mean the forester has been good so far for us uh it's got i think a little in four years it's got 28 29 000 miles it does have some strange things happen to it though so look at this symbol so the subaru you know the six stars whatever it represents look it's starting to peel so that's not cool and that actually started to peel pretty soon after we bought the car so talk about the japanese quality well you know i'm not sure i'm not sure if this is if this is normal but uh probably not at the same time you know overall nothing really interesting on the outside it's got the basic rims for this trim package um it has it has a little boo-boo right here this this little scrape as you can see this is what happens when a 2016 Subaru Forester meets one of those uh, shopping cart gates at a parking lot. Uh, I didn't do that, but, you know, who cares who did, right? So, overall, the styling is, is fine. Uh, right up here, up front. Actually, the, the symbol here is not peeling on, on front. So, don't really know why it's doing that in the back. All right, let's get inside. And, you know... It is very rare that I actually have keys to the car. So most of the time when I shoot my videos, obviously, is in a, at a dealership on a Sunday. So in this case, I do have the key. Let me, let me get in here so you guys can maybe better see it. So here's the, the standard Subaru key. Focus. There you go. And then back here, it has the Subaru thing. We did install a remote, a, a remote start right here so this is a viper very simple just uh you you push and hold and then it does start so comparing this key to a lincoln key so here's a nice little side comparison i do think that the lincoln keys is more classic looking where the subaru key is obviously more modern you know, with the symbol here, but the Lincoln key is the same on both sides. But I do think that a Lincoln key is more classic, although here they did integrate all the buttons in here, and on a Ford, <laughs> it's still a separate remote. Uh, but as far as the remote start, here is this remote start from the Subaru. Here's the remote start from the Lincoln. It's a little bit more comprehensive because here it, you, I can lock and unlock it from this remote. Here is just a simple... Uh, push push and hold and it'll start can't do much so now that we are inside subaru forester here's what i can tell you about it it's a basic car it is it really is so starting from the door panel right here um nothing really it doesn't have the wood paneling or anything it's got the silver plastic this this is pretending to be leather but it but it's really not got these cloth inserts Moving in here, once again, just continuing with this silver trim, and you got, no, sorry, got some, got some neighbors walking by, and it is very hot in here, though. It's been sitting in the sun. So the key, no push button here. Now let me actually start it. So it does do, it does do that, the needle sweep. I do like that. I wish the town car would do something like that. All right, so maybe what I'll do is I'll shut the door. And then I'll just open the window because 
pretty hot actually all windows so what do we have so starting it up so the one interesting thing about this vehicle although you know what now I'll have a hard time hearing <laughs> sorry I'm not used to filming a car that I actually have keys for other than my own car so I'm gonna turn the on turn it on get some AC going and so I can maybe talk and not suffocate well so the interesting thing is is this so number one look at these needles hey, look at the speedometer on the right tachometer on the left first and foremost so there's no temperature gauge uh, if you saw in the beginning this little blue symbol that just went off that's your temperature gauge uh, they just have a light when it's cold it's blue when it's not it just goes away this display right in the middle that's out of something out of like 19 i don't know early 90s maybe display that hasn't really changed in in all that in all these years and i really think that this is kind of a very low point in this vehicle so you can see this car has 27,795 miles i just got gas for it so the, the trip A is 4.5. That's I try to reset those every time if I don't forget. You have this little stick, which is very classic kind of uh, thing from once again, from 90s or even before. Got this long stick that presses a switch inside that just changes the A and B. That's all it does. And then if you want to reset it, so I'll do it on the B. If you want to just hold it, it'll just reset the trip. That's it. You got the fuel gauge that's just the little blocks. And then really no sense of style i mean you have these pods which are it's all underneath the, the clear plastic so you can't touch it that's it that's all you get now the funny thing about this car is this so you see this the same kind of stick that has a select so you have this says trip and this says select so here's the funny part this select sorry i gotta figure out how to film this this select does absolutely nothing so it doesn't do anything there if you try holding it it doesn't do anything so then all right so let's hold that thought so that select stick slash button doesn't do anything at all so then we we move to the dash or maybe before we move to the dash here's here's the steering wheel the steering wheel is okay i mean i like the symbol i like it. it's got the cruise controller though here when you turn it on it just once again is this monochromatic thing that turns on you have the toggle switch to go on and off and then you have a giant cancel button here and then on the left you have a couple different things you have your volume your mute um then left and right selection for um the radio kind of like you know choose the next station then this button brings up several different things in the stereo which the stereo has to be turned on in order for that to work and then the return button once again for the for the middle screen and then down here you have the bluetooth and then you can uh, do change source for am fm type of deal and then voice voice recognition which we never used i i don't care about this button at all and then we come to this screen in the middle and then th that's controlled via buttons right here so you have the the up and down and then the set slash information button so Pressing one of those buttons, right? You can see the temperature outside, the fuel, the time. And, and it's interesting how it's got the, the digital clock next to the analog clock. That's funny. And then you press one of these buttons and then it goes through a lot of different settings. So this screen is much more customizable. So you can see the temperature in there. You don't, for whatever reason, see it here, which to me just looks like they stuck it in as an afterthought. You have the average miles per gallon, 22.9, which is not that much. You know, this car has, you know, a 2.5, the very famous boxer engine, which I know they mentioned this, but all it means is that the cylinder positions, the cylinders are just firing towards each other instead of up and down or on a, on a 45 degree, which I, I don't think it really matters what kind of cylinder position it has. And then it has this. This is probably one of the one of the most useless screens. When you drive it, it just basically shows the road moving. Now this is an all-wheel drive car, and it always does that, so it doesn't really matter. Like this screen does absolutely nothing. And then you have your fuel, your average miles per gallon, and then you have this this other average miles per gallon, and that's a bar that moves to the left and right. 
And then here's another way of looking at the miles per gallon with the distance. And we're back to the clock. And then holding this middle button, actually pulling this middle button, brings up a bunch of different controls. You can change the time. Uh, you can set birthdays, anniversaries. Uh, we actually have a wedding anniversary that's coming up. So that's nice. I remember programming it once. So there's that. Daylight saving time and then go back. And then you can do all the different things like display, change, maintenance. Uh, when, when This is like to reset when you change the oil. All the different reminders. So car settings. I don't even know what that does. Key was buzzer volume, hazard warning, defogger. Oh, you can change how, how fast the defogger will turn off interior lights when they turn off. So, so it does have some interesting things. So the bottom, so why did I even start talking about it? Is this little select thing. So that select button still doesn't do anything on this display. Nothing, absolutely. It has no function at all. But this is what I read. So this is a premium model. So it's the second one from the bottom. And it has manual climate controls right here. So very, very basic. You know, you just turn this, you turn this, which, you know, these little notches, they're very hard to see during the day. Uh, they do light up when it's, when it's dark. So this little notch right here, when it's, you know, when the, um, when it's light outside, I cannot, I, a lot of times the sun glare just kills it and I cannot see how it's set. So I, I just turn it until I get to the desired result. That's a very weird decision why couldn't they make this a larger b stand out more make this red make this something so so here's what i learned when this car has automatic climate control in the higher trim levels first of all these buttons right here these blank switches they turn into some kind of a, a different uh, feature like I think uh, you can like set your temperature you know higher or lower I'll, I'll be posting a video a uh, picture overweight so you guys can see what this does in a higher trim level but in this case this is just a manual thing also in the higher trim level with automatic climate control they have so this little display here in the middle that's on all of them but if you get the higher trim level over here to the left they will have another display. You can actually see the shadow outline of it right there. You can kind of see the square. And presumably this select stick will do something in that display, which in this case, I don't have a display and this select thing doesn't do anything. So why didn't they just take it off? I don't know. Uh, as far as the screen itself, um, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty basic so it has it doesn't have real buttons so this is kind of a, one of these touch sensitive things um, it, you know it, it has the Pandora it has the aha it has whatever it's called the Starlink it's like a Subaru kind of you know on star looking thing but it has very basic type of functionality. Now, it does have a screen, so you got to give it credit. You know, the town car does not have a screen uh, without the navigation. Now, this does not have navigation system. And you see this little blank thing right here on the ones with navigation system. This pops out and it actually you put a little SD card in there with the information uh, for the nav. In this case, I don't have satellite radio in here, so I cannot get to the to the nearest you know fuel station or anything like that but it does have that functionality as you can see in the glare it does kind of wash out even though i think the um screen is pretty much the highest um you know setting for the display so audio you know it's it's basic stuff so you have your fm you know it does have the what's cool about it it does have 36 presets for the radio so obviously all the ones in the middle we never used but you know and the xm is not active so we got our music stations going down this way and then i have my news station going up this way that's kind of how we separated that so it does have the screen so let's give it let's give it credit where credit is due but uh it's a very basic screen it doesn't do anything but it does have the bluetooth phone you have the controls have the little uh, microphone right up here. 
which also it does have the sunglasses holder which i do like in this car which i wish the town car had and then it has this kind of looking uh, on star thing which it doesn't really do anything like i'm not gonna press the sos button but if i press this actually nothing happens you're not currently subscribed to subaru starlink yeah. please visit mysubaru.com to upgrade your service yeah so there you go so i i don't know when i press sos maybe they'll i'll get somebody on the phone but i don't want anything like that so being a premium trim uh we do have the heated seats so that's the one thing that this car does have uh that i am kind of excited about and it has these toggle switches which are kind of nice because you can in the winter time you can leave it on the high and turn the car off but then when you start it from the remote control this is going to stay on on a town car you can't do that because on a town car the switch returns to the back position here you got some more blank switches this little panel right here this car being the base model or almost the base model it has uh just all-wheel drive but then on a higher trim level it has like what's called an x mode where it sometimes like customizes for like heavier snow or heavier off off-road but you know i don't care if this thing is all-wheel drive i don't care that it's a crossover that's higher up the um, uh the ground i wouldn't do anything than just a lot of snow driving in there like i wouldn't take it on the sahara or or in the, the death valley or something you know so here you got a very standard continuous variable uh transmission shifter you got some cup holders we got some sanitizer uh let's see what else well my wife being a nurse she has her masks in there and everything and sanitizer and then here this is the book or <laughs> the binder for all the books that came with this. You know, this car was bought new and we still own it. So we have all of this. So we bought it from Gary Wang Subaru. And I'm not going to go through this, but it's amazing how much material is there on such a very basic car, which leads me to believe that it's the lawyers who drive, who uh, write these things. We do have the window sticker for this car, which I would be happy to show you. So check this out. So this is a Sober Forester 2.5 Premium. It's a dark gray metallic. It was assembled slash port of entry, maybe Vancouver, Washington. Um, so what else here? Standard equipment, so it's an all-wheel drive. We know that you guys can pause if there's something that you wanna read. Limited warranty, so it's already off of its basic warranty, but it still has the powertrain warranty. So here, here's this is interesting. So optional equipment. So we bought this car for twenty four thousand five hundred after some haggling. Uh, so the base price is that twenty five seven nine five. So it has the option package thirteen apparently for five hundred bucks. All weather package, heated front seats. Okay, so there's that. Um, uh, heated side mirrors. Okay, so we like that. Oh, it's got a nice uh, Civic. Oh, no, that's not a Civic. That's a Honda Fit staring at me from one end. And then we got the Toyota Corolla looking at it from the other side. Windshield, the wiper de-icer. That's nice. That's a nice feature. I like that. Continuous variable transmission. It's got all weather floor mats. So that these floor mats did come with the car. And it has the same one in the trunk. Uh, cargo tray. Yep. Luggage compartment cover. That's just you know a cargo cover i don't know why they even charge for that but and then it's got the popular package one for 606 bucks rear bumper covers auto dimming mirror and compass okay that's that not sure how useful that is but um seat back cargo net and exterior mirror mirror okay with the compass which is once again is that the end that's fun. so the final price was 28,085 with the destination fee and we got it for um 24.5 and we got like 10 grand trade-in value for my Buick LaCrosse rest in peace and then the average miles per gallon 27 uh, 24 city 32 highway so that's the window sticker and that's a you know we're not gonna look through all these books but once again I'm just amazed I mean the the manual itself is that much then it's probably has something well you know what the hell I just look at it I just look at it quickly so what do you get you get the owner's manual which is giant you get the warranty booklet which is thin you get 
What do you get? Um, seven inch Subaru Starwing multimedia with navigation, which we don't have navigation, but apparently it covers Forrester, WRX, WRX, and STI. It's interesting that it doesn't cover that Outback. So 2016 Outback has a different system, apparently. Uh, then it has the quick reference guide, which, you know, if, when you have a quick reference guide, that's like a freaking little book, little novel. You know, the quick reference guide has supposedly 27 pages. How is that a quick reference guide? I mean, yes, I know it talks, it's much thinner than the manual. It talks about the push button key, which we don't have, but once again, it does have the power seat. So this one does, you know, on the very base model, I guess you have uh, base seat. So, yeah, you know, so this quick reference guide thing, that's not very quick. And then it has a bunch of other stuff, which, uh, let's see, it has stuff about roadside assistance. It has stuff about your Subaru... Once again, another quick... Oh, this is the Starwing Quick Reference Guide. And then... Safety and Security Booklet. Holy crap. Another warranty and maintenance thing. And then it has the satellite radio thing. So, oh my God, this thing just keeps going. And then it has the tires thing. So... Oh, and then we have a, a second spare key that's kind of sticking out of there. So anyway, that's a lot of material, which, once again, I have not read through i don't think that such a base car with so fewer features even needs this much so here you go all right i'm gonna mess with this thing later so blank switches yes base stuff yes um some stuff there it's a pretty small pretty small armrest but you know it's it's hard it's not town car squishy so let's let's get outside and then you know it does have before i before i go so it does have this little console here and it does have a giant moon roof which is part of the premium package or the premium trim but here's the problem it's not tinted glass so like i'm sitting here right now you know without a hat i mean at this point you can't really see the screen anymore you know it's nice and big but holy moly you know, without a hat, which we're not hat people, and then that's the wind deflector that comes up. You know, we rarely ever use this thing. So it's nice that it's there, but man, would it would it really kill them to make the glass tinted just a little bit? You know, throw like a 20% on there or something? Yeah, maybe that's too much to ask. So here. So we do have here power seats. And then, you know, the funny thing is here that you know, they don't have the little covers here. So the bolts are exposed underneath the seat. All right. And then what do we have here? So back here, you know, I don't know. I just sat on something. Oh, well, beauty of having a kid. You know, you have the car seat. So this is where I would control uh, the seat, uh, where I would, where I would um, use it to drive. No back seat pocket here. Uh, we would probably want to move this seat forward. I think some uh, we were playing in the car earlier, so we would have more room for the little one. But sitting back here, I mean, I'm not hurting for space. You know, I'm 5'11", and yeah, I have plenty of space. The headroom is really nice. I have plenty of headroom. Here you do have, so this car has two, um, two lights. I'll turn it off. Back here, no, no real creature comforts. You know, very basic. I don't, you don't even get that little silver trim that you get up front. Very fake leather-looking material. No vents in the back. That sucks. No power point in the back. Nothing. I mean, this is as base as it gets. You do get these all-weather floor mats, but you know, even with the giant moonroof, the moonroof does not really reach me back here. I mean, it's nice that I could have more light in here, but this would be a disaster visibility-wise for the driver. Do have the handles, that's nice. The rear seats do fold, but man, you know, in general, this is pretty base, you know, you have this cloth material, it's durable, I'll give it that. 
Uh, the headrest, they do one of these things. The town car doesn't do that. But besides an armrest with some cup holders, <laughs> nothing. All right. Doors do open quite wide. So you got your Subaru all wheel drive. So the trunk is, is pretty nice. I'll give it that. Um, let's see. Oh, we got our snow brush here. Yeah, I got this all weather format stuff. You do have, I think down here. Yeah, you do have like another little tray and then the spare tire is underneath it. So it's, it's nice. We padded and everything. And I could stand right underneath this tailgate. And it does have a uh, like a bag hook up here, so that's that's nice. I don't think we ever used it, but it's nice that it's there. Now I guess we could do it underneath the engine a little bit. So just really a few problems that we had with this car. Oh, forgot about this. Got your traction control button and the dimmer switch. So this would be the button for the automatic trunk. We don't have it. This would be some other buttons, which we don't have. So I don't know what's up with all the blank switches, but it is there. That's the one thing I love about the town car. No blank switches. So. So here's that famous boxer engine. It's nice and quiet. It doesn't have a beauty cover on it. And I didn't take it off. It's just not, it just wasn't there. Let me shut the car off so it's not interfering. So, so the one problem that we did have with this car was uh, the battery it was just not holding the charge. So this is a new battery, which I put in as of the probably two weeks ago. So for 27 thousand miles in four years i don't know why the battery just wouldn't hold the charge anymore but you know i mean what do i know about engines you have your air filter here i know because i changed it every once in a while i like how the oil filter is nice and accessible mechanics love that stuff but yeah i mean it does have a lot of room underneath this this hood um that thing right there i think that's a tilt switch for the remote start system but yeah, I mean, in general, um, the coolant, actually, uh, I had to add some coolant because the coolant evaporated somewhere. It's not leaking, but, you know, I don't know, got used up. But in general, it's, it's not bad. It's no town car, but it's not bad at all. So what can I tell you? I can tell you that this car is, is fine. It serves its purpose. My wife likes it. It, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like, I don't feel passionate about this car. I can tell you that much. And by the way, for my car, um, still we're waiting for that seal for the moonroof. So I taped it off so it's not leaking. I am still waiting on the part for the seat belt. So, and the reason why I'm getting on this side, somebody parked really close to me, so I'm, I don't want to have a hard time getting, getting in there. So, I don't feel special driving this car. But this car, I feel special just sitting in here on the passenger side, which I rarely ever get to do. Uh, in this car, have zero blank switches actually and i just i just realized that just talking out loud about it sorry my fingers are in the way this car's got wood this car's also have heated seats but it, they don't have it's not a toggle thing so i can't leave them on but i like how on models that don't have heated seats or the memory you know they do change the plastic so there's no blank switches I do like the fact that they do cover up, now, although I know it's rusty, I should probably make another video taking the rust off. So, although this car serves its purpose and, you know, that Subaru Forester, I do like this car better, simply because I feel passionate about it. And 
oh man just sitting in here i'm so comfortable i don't even want to leave but i know i have to end this video because it's 35 minutes long and i don't know how many of you will have the patience to watch it all so although i'm not an suv or crossover person i can tell you this that i like choices i like the fact that if somebody wants to buy one of these they can but I also want to be in a position where if somebody like me wants to buy one of these, these large sedans, I want to be able to. And it's sad that it seems to be that the world is turning towards these, not these. Because even, you know, 2016, like these are winning, these were losing, and now in 2020, these are definitely losing and these are definitely winning. So... On that note, I want so, you know, once again, want to thank everyone who watched till the end. Thank you. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe. You know, if you don't like it, tell me what you don't like about it. And see you next time.